We want to say thank you to our sponsors, Watchman Cigars, 1812 Barbecue, Blue Collar Cycle Shop, and Hook, Line, and Heroes. Without you, this episode would not be possible. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's our take on life, liberty, and the pursuit of gravy. And you, the listener, are getting a degree in common sense. We are broadcasting from the Blue Collar Cycle Studio right here in beautiful Concord, North Carolina. We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. But before we begin, let me introduce you to the starting lineup. To my left, your right on the radio dial is producer Brian. Hey, guys. Uh, I, of course, be your host, Biggin, and how about you? And across the way is the pride of Anderson, South Carolina, but most of you probably know him best as the Silver Tongue one, 2016's Honorable Mention Father of the Year, the inventor of the redneck egg roll. Give it up on old mic number one. It's Mojo! Hey, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast once again. Uh, please go to our website at southernfryphilosophy.com. You have our playable links there. Our show notes, where we reference things in our show, you can always take a peek at all those. They have our sponsors' ads in there. Go check them out. Also, you can check us out on the Facebooks at Southern Fry Philosophy. Or also, Twitter's at Instagram at SFP Radio. I think we have a new Twitter handle, don't we? Uh, at Healthy SFP Radio. Okay. Yeah, that, we're keeping track of uh, Biggin's uh, progress well, and some I of like ours, I guess. All of ours, yeah. yeah. You guys have the, the, the password, so you guys can... Yeah, I lost that. Thing. I'm gonna need to get that again. Yeah, okay. So just go ahead and tell me right now. While we're uh, on there. <laughs> I don't even know. What, I don't even know what Twitter <laughs> is. I see what you're doing. Is I see what you're doing. Yeah, please go to those. Where wherever you go to your wherever you listen to your podcast at, just go there. Your favorite podcast aggregator. Go there. Hit subscribe. Give us a like if you have to. Um, do a search. If Southern Fry Philosophy. We're pretty simple. We Easy kept, peasy. We, we kept we kept it simple. Stupid. So anyway, uh, go there. Uh, like subscribe give us a review that's the most important thing we appreciate the guys out there doing that for us no doubt um you can also find us on patreon at patreon.com forward slash sfp radio we do it we'll, we'll we will have some more insider editions coming up soon as yep. soon as we uh have Talk time marty. Guess, right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, marty's down for it anytime so. he is yeah but yeah just check us out on those avenues also uh on our outline that we have i know you you might not be able to see it because my printer it's printed in Steve, Steve you wonder handwriting. <laughs> oh, yeah. That looks it ran out of ink today. I was like, ah, mm. I got some stuff in, but uh, on our outline, it's it's pretty hard to read. Uh, but we want to say thanks to States Vegas Radio for uh, pro- playing the show, 6 o'clock on Mondays, 4 o'clock on Fridays. So if you want to tune in, you can check out their uh, mobile app on the Google Play, I, iTunes Store, whatever that's called. Um, and use promo code MOJO, and you'll get it for free. So how about you on that? This week only. Only this week. We want to say shout-out to our listeners from Orlando and Omaha. This episode brought to you by Peyton Manning. (laughs) 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 That was like the biggest boost to Omaha, too. Did you hear about that? No. Yeah, when when he started yelling at Omaha, Mm -hmm. he uh, evidently the uh, business bureau, the the Chamber (laughs) Chamber of Commerce, was like, oh, man, we have the – we're like the top search Google item now, and people are starting to inquire about doing business in Omaha. Except for the fatties, because they instantly we think steaks. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> steaks is a little twice baked potatoes. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Have you ever gotten Omaha steaks? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've, never I've gifted them a few times. Really? They're they're overpriced. Sure. But it's convenient. How about, Sher- like how about Sherry's Berries? Oh, I actually <laughs> just did that for my mother-in-law. Those are my, actually really good, man. I had yeah, some they similar. are. I haven't had them. I think I've sent, I've sent all the... And the commercial things to mm. people use at one coupon point. Code. I've used flowers dot com or one eight hundred flowers. Yep. yep. I, I think I've sent the berries mm-hmm. to. Oh, you know what? I sent them to like, like mother in law, grandmother in law, mm. mama, like. Yep. Anyone that wasn't the dude that was related to basically Listen, got berries one year. I would love to get those berries. <laughs> those things are ginormous. You remember that, right? Those are organic, are. right? <laughs> mutant, I think. But yeah. Man, those things were. Just, I'd be like the size of your fist. Yeah. They're crazy. They're big. probably like injected with sweetness, like sugar or something, right? I'm, I'm okay sweet, with right? that. Well, I mean, have you got I, a sour one? I'm down for some diabetes I once I 
I'm down for the diabetes when I order something like that. So I actually ordered some today for my adopted mom in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. I'm, I don't know if she listens to the show, but hey, buddy, you can you can drop fifty easy on that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And what, what coupon code? You got to catch use? coupon uh, code. I I tried to use uh, Matt Jones. That evidently he's no longer. There's nothing going on right now. Hmm. From Shares uh, Bears. Well, yeah, because well, you always use Rush. I tried to rush. We're about, oh. I tried. It's 18 days out of, uh, if you'd waited like six. I should have, but like her birthday February is, 1st. Her birthday is coming up, like mm. right now. Like it's, and I'll mm. use some Sherry's berries when we're half <laughs> right. off. I, I'm going to be honest straight up with you. Mm. I hate edible arrangements. I've had people send me that. <laughs> people have sent you edible arrangements. Yeah. Well, you don't want to mess it up because it's so pretty. Is that what it is? Or is it just, I don't need no, pineapple like, on a stick? Uh, no, I don't know. Just you're <laughs> yeah, like I looking at Well, I mean, you don't want to mess it up because you're like, oh, that is kind of cool and pretty and, mm. you know, art, art, artisanal. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just uh, just buy me a whole pineapple. Mm. I'll make you a whole pie or something. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-huh. The one with the with the, like the bananas that have the chocolate on them. Oh, okay, that, now that's, oh, that's a buddy. little different. Now that was, that <laughs> but was I, I would rather someone send me like a jerky arrangement, like a oh, like a, a jerky, sort of jerky, yeah, maybe? like a sort of jerky <laughs> bouquet or something. That I think we're cool. onto something. Is there like yeah. a jerky of the month club? We could, uh... I, you know, there got there, you know there has to be. They mm. have that those mm. crate clubs, you know, the man crate things. Mm-hmm. You got, I think they give you like try this uh, weird uh, armadillo jerky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I can I I confess to you guys. I actually talk about subscription things. Actually subscribed to a Buzzbox Coffee. It's a it's a coffee send it every month type thing. Mm-hmm. I get it I get it tomorrow. What's what is in it? Uh, just really good coffee. Now good that I'm on box. I'm on the the diet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't have the creamer and the mm-hmm. sugar and all is you know all that. Mm-hmm. I can have nut pods, which does not taste like milk. Mm-hmm. Well, see, uh, I, I I like my coffee like my women, just straight bitter. You know, I don't. These look like wait Buzzbox mm-hmm. coffee. Buzz box or coffee. these are like wine coolers, the one I found. <laughs> Buzz box. Like, no, you, know, I, you drink okay. a, the whole case you. of them, you're going to. No, these are these are sponsored by um, uh, one, of, one of the owners is Rick Burgess from uh, Rick and Bubba. He promoted it. And it's actually really, I've had it before. Yeah, that's not it at all. It's like a juice box with uh, yeah, liquor no, in it. That's wow. not it. That's but actually a d- I think phenomenal. I'm describing like to too. this right now. That's kind of like, <laughs> that's kind of like uh, Jameson's whiskey just came out with, you know, the Tide Pod craze. Well, they ca- they capitalized no. on it. The whiskey and pod. They came. Jameson just came out with a whiskey pod, and I thought that was the most ingenious thing. Can you drop it in your coffee, like for like Irish I'm coffee? I'm sure you could. Oh, it was that'd po- be portable oh, portable booze pods. I thought that was phenomenal. Okay, let me do some better uh, searching it's here. B u z z box coffee dot com. I just searched for Buzz Box. Oh. And the the well, yeah, I can see that the mommy juice boxes. Uh, <laughs> have the first name, so Mommy Go Go Juice. Yeah, Mommy yeah. Go Go Juice. Um, so I get it tomorrow, so I'm excited to cool to try that again. So, do you grind? Uh, do you grind your own coffee, or do you? Or do you uh, uh, you can order like however you want to do. Yeah, it. but do you, just, do you get, I don't. You don't grind I your own. I just get okay. the I get the uh, the cone drip. Okay. Um, but this is supposed to be like ground. It was it was ground today, and it'll be here tomorrow. How much comes at a time? Uh, I ordered two pounds. Okay, so that's like two weeks worth of coffee, right? Right. And you can order like however close you want mm, or whatever. I'm going to go back and forth. You know, good coffee, bad coffee. Good coffee, bad coffee. Mm. Okay. Cause I'm, Space it out a what, what we do, I'm a, I'm not as huge a coffee snob as I used to be. Okay. But Harris Teeter will do these uh, two for five deals okay. on, on their whole bean coffee. Okay. And I grind it myself, but we'll get 10 of those for nothing. And I grind it every morning. I grind fresh. Mm. Grounds. Here's the question, though: if you if you buy it like that in the bean, mm-hmm. do you get less coffee? Mm-hmm. It's about weight. See, so if I get it ground, I get more coffee. But it's fresher, it tastes better. Well, it's, I, I it's used ground to. Yesterday. I used to be. Well, it's a, all about weight. It shouldn't be less coffee. It's either a pound of beans or a pound of grounds. Well, I don't think you get a pound of beans. I think it's a. Well, they're all I think 12, it's 12, they're 12, ounces, twelve ounces. Unless you go to Starbucks, that's a pound. Sorry, yeah. it's all twelve ounces. Hmm. But it's mm. it's about weight. It's about, well, about I know, wow. like at the bigger places like Sam's and BJ's oh, and Costco, they sell their. It's always bulk beans. Is always less. Like you'll get two pounds versus three pounds of ground. Mm. So yeah, because you kind of you're, you're even though you get a pound of it, you would get more if it's smaller surface area. It's not about it's about weight. It's though. by weight though. Yeah, he's right about that. But mm. I used to enjoy the act of actually gr- grinding the coffee and the whole. I just don't have time anymore. I mean, yeah. and it's, and I've also gone to like raw gut. 
coffee like Folgers or Maxwell. <laughs> I, I, I drink so much of it though. Like I'll drink, you know, a full pot, mm, you know, no. by myself. Sure. I, just, I don't know. It's gotta be good. I can't, uh, I'll I, drink that. If it's there, I'll drink it. But like my love life, I'm a, I'm a one shot wonder, one cup of coffee and I'm done. Wow. <laughs> and you, you subscribed. So he he's not going what? through two pounds. Two pounds. He's not going through two. We're pounds. making a whole pot. I mean, we make a whole pot. Your wife's probably drinking three My, or four yeah. cups, right? Yeah. <laughs> Someone's we'll, drinking a coffee. Some. Yeah. We also water it down probably way more than we should. Mm. So maybe we'll have you over <laughs> to talk about how, how we should make coffee. Let's go fix Biggins' coffee. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you like I ask you every week, Mojo. I be darned. I was doing phenomenal until. The uh, check engine light comes on my truck. Wait, what? The yeah, new truck? Yeah. The brand like, new truck? Well, it's not brand new, well, but it's got 70,000 miles on it. I mean, I, I mean, it's new to me. New to you? Yeah. It was pretty new when you I mean, it yeah, it only had I mean, like yeah. 20,000 on it. Yeah. yeah so, but yeah, you know, and I'm very meticulous with my, my engine maintenance. So mm-hmm. now that's all I can think about is what does this mystery check engine light oh, mean? Because no. you have to. Is the gas cap like half off? Something simple like that. No, because I, 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 I already filled, I filled up like 400 miles. Ago, yeah, but so if you don't like yeah, crank it down. Well, yeah. Diesel might be different on it. No, same thing, back pressure. But um, So, yeah, I've got a check engine light. So now I'll be thinking about that until I can go home and pull a code oh, reader out. i got a code reader in my car. Do you? Yeah, we can set, we can take care of it. Nice. Right, we're going to go take a break. As soon as we're we'll done. Right <laughs> <laughs> no, we get my, my headspace clear. I'm pretty yeah. sure I have it with me. Yeah, yeah but I, I just that drives me nuts with, with check engine lights because mm-hmm. – you, you just don't know, and these cars are so sensitive now. So they have sen- they have sensors for everything. Snowflake cars is what we yeah. got. Well, I get the the, yeah, the air, the tire light going for the air. Really? You know? Yeah. And at one point, I drove like a work vehicle that told you which tire it was. Mm-hmm. And of course, none of my cars tell me which tire. One tire is low, mm-hmm. but which of the four tires? <laughs> or just tell mm-hmm. me which one it is. Why is it that hard to build that into the dash? Yeah. So I don't. I, I had to go check them all. Mm. See, or my, the spare used to have like my, I had a Jeep and the spare had a sensor on it. Oh wow! wow. So I'd check them all, like pulling yeah. my hair out. Literally, and I went to the dealership. And I, oh yeah, that was the spare. Oh, <laughs> Who would think that? What? That's a full size spare. You know? Uh, yeah, I have them. On, I have them each on every tire, so I can tell. Yeah. Okay. But so if you have one that goes bad, it's like sixty bucks oh, just yeah. for the sensor. And I've already had mm. to place like two of them. So oh, geez. yeah. I on mine it tells you the the tire pressure on all four. But, like, one of them right now is at 38, and the other one's at 32. Shouldn't the sensor go off at that point? It'll like, probably go off after you're on the side of the road flat. <laughs> 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 By the way. <laughs> Producer Brian, how you been doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. Um, I've determined that the entire city of Charlotte is on the same diet as me. Oh. Because uh, I can't find, like, the pre-made cauliflower rice in a store mm. anywhere. Uh, this January. like Walmart. I don't do that. But the stores that I am willing to go into to shop. I'm with you on that. One. I, <laughs> I, I, I do not go to Walmart I either. I don't. Uh-uh, unless it's, it's, I'll buy my children's shoes at Walmart because they're cheap and they destroy them immediately. Let me be clear. I don't go into Walmart. Walmart oh, comes in. I got to give them my information. No. I'm not mm. doing that. Anyway, right. the uh, two or three grocery stores that I mm. frequent, no cauliflower all rice at all. Like mm. Maybe I keep going the wrong day a week and I'm missing stock day. I'm not, I'm not making my. I could just get the cauliflower and. Do you have food a membership to it. BJ's? I have Sam's. I, I have. Got, I just used the last of my uh, five gallon bucket of cauliflower rice, so I'm very interested in getting <laughs> you get some a more five gallon bucket of cauliflower. No, it's just like a bag. Oh. It's, it's like, like a four, value pack. It's a big. Yeah. It's got like four 12 ounce bags in it, which yeah. lasts. That's like two meals for me. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Do you want the wife to to put some? In her cart for you, and then I can I can deliver it. Uh, you gonna be my cauliflower dealer? <laughs> <laughs> First one's hey, free. Hey man, well, well, there's that, and then like so keto. No, we, he's talked about. Mm. I'm just talking about chaffles. I've talked about chaffles. Oh man, I bought. I've already had a waffle maker, mm. but I got a mini. The waffle. dash. I got the yeah. dash. It was just ten dollars. Yeah. Picked the last one up off the shelf on, on the shelf at Target like two days ago. Mm. Like they're out. I was like, oh. Wow! Mine, you know, really? Yeah, it's ten bucks. So you know, if it breaks in the year, I don't care because it's only yeah. ten dollars. But well, everybody, you th- your your theory is people are buying waffle mi- waffle makers to make chocolate. Sure. Why else would you buy a waffle maker? Weddings. You know, here's the thing about waffles: they mm-hmm. take forever. They do. So if like it's usually a single, like I have a single waffle maker. Mm-hmm. If I make waffles for my family. It takes like 45 minutes just to cook all the waffles. Really? Yeah. 
takes a long time. Mm-hmm. And they're good. I mean, they're great. Right. But maybe, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. But it, takes, it feels like I'm standing there. I'm the last one to get a waffle, too, which doesn't mm-hmm. help. But No. He keeps <laughs> smelling it. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Hot Pocket today, he, uh, he heated up some French toast sticks. <sighs> the frozen kind. Mm, yeah. I was like, oh. That's, that's a temptation right there. So, and this past weekend, he had a honey bun. <laughs> Guys, <clears throat> I'm not kidding you when I say I took, I freebased a honey bun, <laughs> just s- smelling it, and it actually was oddly satisfying. <laughs> just get like some uh, candles or something, like a vanilla candle or something oh, to put, put it. in your office. It'll you make know, you, yeah. So it'll give you, make you think like cookies are baking all the time or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it was oddly satisfying because I kept sniffing it, and he's like, what are you doing? I'm was like, it in the wrapper or out of the wrapper? It was out of the wrapper. Okay. Um, he, he didn't eat it all, so half of it was just sitting on the counter. Yeah. So every once in a while, I'll be talking to my uncle, and I just like lean over. We we'll just have someone oh, yeah, bring you like a, a Krispy Kreme box, an empty one. Oh, that's I could. That's, you know, used. Yeah. So the glaze. Is still little, yeah. That's, yeah, but I would be tempted to lick the glaze, lick the glaze, the dry glaze of it. Yeah. Um, I also did something that uh, I haven't done in quite a while, and forgot why I don't do this anymore. Um, trying to get rid of stuff. I sent you guys a picture this morning. Do you guys want my Ninja Professional uh, Ninja Blender? You guys said, absolutely not. I don't want it. I, I said, I understand. I, don't, I have I don't a blender. For that. You got it. You're good. Guy. It was a, if it was a tiny blender, I might be interested in it. Yeah. Because, you know, I like small things, apparently. <laughs> and um, so I was like, well, I don't want to just throw it away. It still works. It's still good. So um, I'm not going to put it on Craigslist, which is like the dollar general of stores, I feel like. So mm. I was like, I'm going to go one step up. Like the Walmart version, and I'm going to put it on Facebook Marketplace. It's just it's classy, know, classy. Yeah. You know, there's you know, it's it's easily it's more trusted, I guess you could say. Guys, I put it in there for for free. I had 37 messages within like 10 minutes. Is this available? Is this available? And then I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. Like I can't. <laughs> what are you saying to me? Uh, and so like it was insane. Um, and then I was like, this is what I'm Did you raise do. your price? I should have. One lady offered me a dollar. I'm like, I think that's kind of insulting. Um, so I put it in the box, and everybody that messaged me, is this available? I was like, it is it is available. If you want it, I'll give you the address, but it's on the front porch. First comes, first serve. Oh, no. You would not believe the attitude that people got from that. Well, I don't want to go through the hassle. Wait, what? Um, no, thank you. That's rude. Wait, what? Mm. These are messages that I'm getting from these people. I'm trying to give this thing away. I don't want it. You can have it. Just come get it. Well, I'm going to be there in three hours. Is that okay? I don't know. If it's well, still here, yeah. Will you message me? Um, Maybe. Like, I don't. This is way too much. Mm. I got way caught up in things. Y'all. It's when you do the old Salvation Army drop off. I should have probably done that. It was just way more of a hassle. No, I mean, it, I get it. People that may not be able to afford that nice of a blender, you know, they were out there looking for stuff like that. Sure. But, but but also the flip side, I mean, come on, people are doing you a favor by giving you something free. You don't mm-hmm. have to freaking harass them about it. Right. I mean, I've had, we've had like, we'll put something up there for like 10 bucks, like a, you know, metal coat rack that we've had for mm-hmm. ever, whatever, and put it out there for like five bucks and, you get the ones like, hey, will you take, can you take any less? Is that, is that your bottom dollar? Right. Dude, it's five bucks. <laughs> the question that, that blew my mind was, are you sure it's free? This is this is my ad, and yes, it's free. Well, it's free, but you got to give a $40 donation. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I just don't think I'm ever going to use that. Yeah. I mean, I again. understand, like, if it's a lot of trouble to leave the house to go pick it up, and you're not the first one there. It could be disappointing or frustrating. I see that angle. Yeah. Well, and let me be clear. I also said, you know, it's available first come, first serve. If you're interested, let me know, and I'll give you my address. Mm, oh, okay. You, so know, you didn't just put it on the porch and drop your address on Twitter or something? Oh, Lord, no. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> oh, that's, that's uh, what it sounded like no, to me. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that would have been fun. I could have like, oh, been sitting crazy. in my office watching it. That would have been great. Um, no, they were just very rude. And I'm like, y'all. Oh. I'm just trying to give this Welcome to the internet. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's the problem. If you're in the market for a high-quality cigar for a very reasonable price, you must check out our friends at Watchman Cigars. 
Watchman Cigars is a family-owned business that puts the customer first with the best customer service in the business. Watchman Cigars offers the Habano for a full, spicy flavor, the Connecticut for a mild, easy-to-smoke option, and the Maduro for a strong, powerful experience. They even do specialty blends and partner with you to provide a custom, exclusive line just for you. Watchman Cigars has all your cigar needs. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Watchman Cigars 1991 or check out his new website at WatchmanCigars.com or the sponsor section of our website. Uh, I do want to do some follow-up things. Guys, we have got the DOT actually having some gosh dang common sense. Can you believe this? The feds are looking to block passengers from flying with pets as emotional support animals. Woohoo! Hmm. Airlines no longer would be required to accommodate emotional support uh, animals under the new federal rules proposed on Wednesday. Only service animals, right? That's a different... Only service animals okay. will be allowed on. Because apparently those are different. They are. Well, they're they're actually, the process to actually having a service animal, yeah. Right. The U.S. Department of Transportation said it wants to ensure that individuals with disabilities can continue using their service animals while reducing the likelihood that passengers wishing to travel with their pets on an aircraft will be able to falsely claim their pets are service animals. The federal law currently requires airline uh, or allows passengers with disabilities to travel with trained service animals as well as emotional support animals in the cabin. Unlike pets, service and support animals fly for free. Uh, the U.S. Airlines already tightened the rules for emotional support animals over the past couple of years as more animals sitting among passengers led to problems. Here's what the uh, in 2018, airlines flew more than 1 million passengers with emotional support animals, up 81% compared to 2016. Only trained service animals rose only 24% in the same period. Uh, so they are doing a 60-day public commenting phase to listen to everybody's thoughts and opinions on this, but they are, in fact, going to try to pass the law. This says airlines would, would be allowed to require passengers to submit forms developed by the Transportation Department uh, assessing to the animal's good behavior, health, and ability to either to either not relieve itself or do so in a sanitary way on long flights, unlike our friend Mojo over here who poops on planes. So, um, guys, I just... Put a puppy pad down on the airplane? How does that work? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing I've, I've heard. <laughs> I'm telling you. That they're, they're getting rid of the emotional support animals? No, like, while... Yeah, why why do we have that category? Because number one, this is a private business. These these are airlines. That's They're private my businesses. So they don't have to let anybody fly. You're, they decided they just want to go naked naked flights all day and no passengers. They could do that. That's that's a prerogative. But the, it says federal law requires you to right now allow you to have service animals and emotional support animals. It's stupid. I'm sorry. That should not be. A, that should not be a federal law as far as the emotional support. support. I mean the right. the the regular disability animals, service animals. That right. that's different. I mean that is mm -hmm. sure. That's different. But people are just obvi obviously skirting a loophole to bring so, said animals. I mean that's the last thing I want. I want to be last thing I want to be on is a, a red eye from Charlotte to Chicago mm -hmm. and having some Pekingese taking a dump right beside me when I'm trying to eat my little prepackaged breakfast. I mean, right. Yeah, I literally saw a headline today where a guy registered a beer <laughs> right. as an emotional support animal. See, that, yeah, and kudos to him because it just well shows you the absurdity of yep. how we get away with this. But it sounds like they're going to eject the emotional support. Well, I don't know. Right now they're going to, they're leaving open for 60 days for comments. Well, I think they're going to pass it, but... Well, let's hope so. Yeah. I mean, I... Y'all, the PETA gets involved or something. Yeah, you know what? Here's the thing: if the if the free market had its way, you'd have airlines saying, "I right, tell you what," you'd have airline A would be like, "No, we're not doing this. It's only service mm -hmm. animals." Airline B like, you know what? We're going to capture this whole audience with emotional support animals and basically have you know Noah's Ark on wheel, uh, Noah's Ark with wings. I mean, <laughs> right. so the free market would answer that, and we'd probably find out that nobody wants to fly in an airplane that smells like a puppy's pee pad. The the uh, new proposed law is also limiting it to dogs. 
because under federal law, trained horses. It's trained miniature horses miniature, as well. Yeah, yeah, dogs and yeah. I mean, yo, what is a miniature horse going to do? And I'm assuming they're buying a ticket for this miniature horse, right? No, it's not just no. It's probably out. discrimination they ha- against they their have disability. To, they have to let it but fly it, free. And they have to fly for free. Yes, but it gets a seat on the plane. Like, is there it have a space? I don't. Is know. it taking a ticket out of like? Is that from a business standpoint? Is that a ticket you're not selling because yeah. there's a horse? I think I think so. I think they're required to actually give it because it's. That'd be like saying to someone who, I don't know. We I, we need to check on that. But my logic would be like I'd be like someone who has to fly with a, like li- some type of life supporting means like a sure. you know, tank or this mm-hmm. or that that they you know. It, if it had to sit aside, then I, I don't think they'd have to buy a seat for that. that would be... But for mm. for a horse, this article says that um, <clears throat> that they would. It's only restricting it, or it is restricting it to dogs, so that they can uh, take up the foot space or sit on the person's lap. Mm. For larger service animals, airlines would be required to seat the passenger next to an empty seat in the same class, if available. Fly the animal in the cargo hold, or move the passenger to a later flight with more room. <clears throat> but I don't know what they do now with a mini horse. Well, think I've never seen one. They're not that miniature. I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, pretty, they're probably the size of a Great Dane. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was like, Great Dane, or maybe a little bit smaller. But, but they're huge. They're hefty though. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, they're a block. They're a block of you know. Yeah, they're a block of meat there. Uh, yeah, I know. As flying as a, quote, person of size, mm. uh, you can, Southwest allows you to buy two tickets, uh, fly to wherever you need to go, and then they'll refund you one of them. Oh, really? The seats. Yeah. So it's like a, it's a booking one. thing. Yeah. So there's that. Interesting. So now everybody can just say they emotionally support two people. Persons of size. Uh, emotionally support uh, su- uh, your uh, support your imaginary Pat. friend. <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, let's go to some wacky news brought to you by eighteen twelve barbecue. If you need a fantastic caterer and a great um, with some great food, fantastic brisket, uh, producer Brian, you actually tried eighteen twelve barbecue rub. Yeah, I have some of his rub. Um, he he gave us a bottle when he was on the mm-hmm. show. Uh, Finally, I've been waiting for a while. About I smoked uh, like a chuck roast mm. a few weeks ago, and it was that's fantastic. Spot on. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, check out our friends there on the sponsor section of our site, guys. Uh, Mexico City subways say that their escalators are breaking down. Any idea what's causing the breakdown? They're in Mexico City. <laughs> good, qu- good response, producer Brian. I, every time I see the word escalator, I think about Mitch Hedberg. You remember the comedian? No. He says uh, escalators don't break down. They become stairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, travelers in the Mexico City subway systems often blame authorities um, for broken down escalators at the subway stops, but Metro officials uh, have other explanations. The vast amount of pee. Somehow urine, somehow. Urine is penetrating and corroding the drive wheels and mechanisms of the escalators that carry riders up from the underground stations. That listed published uh, in a list published Tuesday, the Metro system listed corrosion due to urine as one of the top five causes of escalator breakdowns. Uh, so something something actually <laughs> broke something down that wasn't climate change. That's <laughs> interesting. Maybe the climate change is causing people to pee. Could be. You know, and yeah. so they have to go there. Uh, the Fer- Furman Ramirez, the system's assistant manager for rails and facilities, say that riders appear to be urinating on, on escalators at off-peak hours and lightly used stations, even though it seems hard to believe. Uh, we always we open up the escalators for maintenance, and there's always urine. Uh, people say that uh, it's difficult because there are no... Uh, bathrooms, even pay bathrooms in the uh, subway. Of the system's 467 escalators, 22 are out of service on any given day. Uh, the, the city plans to replace about 55 of those. I, I wouldn't replace one of them. I'd just make them stairs. Yeah. You know, if, if you have people act like animals, treat them like animals. They can walk up the stairs. Yeah. I have a theory how this is happening. Okay. Come on. So imagine this is the middle of the night or late at night. You uh, had about, you know, dozen tequilas or so sure. you're trying to walk home 
Maybe mm-hmm. you're just with a buddy or something, and you get to this escalator, and you really got to go. And you go, know, I bet I can make it to the bottom. You oh. know, it's not a little competition there. I <laughs> Probably, like yeah. it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Um, why don't they just put like a uh, a trough on the on the side of it, and it'll just slide next down next to the handrail, right? Yeah, next to the handrail, and then see, just let it slide down. Because then said guy who's smashed a few tequilas will put his hand in the trough. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I mean, urine, y'all. That's that's, that's just gross. Crazy. I'm I'm sorry. That's gross. That's gross. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, makes me not want to visit Mexico City. It's not brought to you by the Mexico Tourism Board. <laughs> <laughs> the 1812 barbecue story started over 20 years ago when Eric and his dad started entering local barbecue competitions for fun. During that time, Eric, a United States Marine, has traveled all over the world picking up flavors and techniques that today is the unique flavor of the award-winning 1812 barbecue. He has honed his craft to bring you fall-off-the-bone pulled pork, mouth-watering ribs, and finely crafted beef brisket. Eric has developed his own amazing dry rub and delicious barbecue sauce. And let's not forget the sides. Coleslaw, smoked Gouda mac and cheese, cowboy baked beans, and to top it all off, banana pudding and pecan pie for dessert. Getting hungry yet? Good. Call or email Eric at eighteen twelve barbecue, and he can make your next catered meal happen. Wedding and graduation parties, family reunions, and other events will be memorable with eighteen twelve barbecue. Want to try your own hand at smoking meats? Pick up your own eighteen twelve dry rub and start the journey for yourself. Shipping all over the world. Connect with Eric on his Facebook page, Instagram at eighteen twelve barbecue, or call seven zero four six zero four fifty one forty eight. Or email Eric at eric.line at 1812barbecue.com, and he'll be glad to help any way he can. Maybe uh, this next story will keep you from uh, going to the grocery. Uh, Police in Auburn, Washington, recently released footage of a bizarre situation that they believe is occurring in a local grocery store. After several reports of possible break-ins and employees complaining to hear footsteps coming from the ceiling, Police believe that an unknown individual has spent several weeks hiding in the store's rafters. But while the evidence of the suspect has been found at the scene, authorities have not been able to locate the man, and they have not ruled out the possibility that he is still maybe in the store. Over the weekend, authorities with the Auburn Police shared surveillance service um, from Facebook asking if anybody knows the man. They have been called to that uh, that grocery store at least five times. Um, They have searched uh, over four and a half hours poking around trying to find the man. They have used uh, reportedly infrared technology and canine units, but they are unable to find the individual. Guys, is this... What's the proof that the the guys actually exist now? Uh, The proof is that the uh, ductwork has been moved. People have actually seen him. Uh, There's a video going, surveillance of him like carrying around a bag of cigarettes in the middle of the night. Maybe he's an apparition. He's he's stolen thousands of dollars worth of cigarettes and liquor. <laughs> wow, that guy's having a great night. My right man. There. Um, yeah, goodness gracious. So you're saying you know, we have crackpot SWAT K9 units on police forces who With can sniff out technology. Yeah, who can sniff out an eighth of an ounce and arrest it and then display. Their goods of uh, a procurement of an eighth of an ounce and maybe a handgun and like twenty two dollars in cash on the Facebooks. You know, have you seen those mm. where the cops will do yeah. that? But they can't find this guy. My theory uh, is that he's actually going down the the dog treat aisle and just wrapping himself in there, <laughs> putting dog treats around to, to yeah to, good. to ward off the ward evil, off the evil canine. He's probably just a store manager, so he knows it's happening. <laughs> no. And they all leave. He goes, all right, let me go sleep in the attic. <laughs> Inside job. Is this guy not the most genius man? One, he can't be found. But two, he's just like living in the rafters of a grocery store. You're not going to go hungry. No. I mean, evidently he's stealing It's pretty smart, though, if you think. Liquor. Yes. Yeah, you got bathroom facilities. You got, good to go. There's yeah. like a steamer or something in the seafood area. You could like make lobster at night. Yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah. I, I think the guy's kind of genius. Oh. So that would <laughs> that'd be my weakness. Oh. So. I mean, you you could like make you go to the bakery, rotisserie chickens, all you, all, uh, you know, chickens. Yeah. Listen, if I gotta go, if I gotta be held up somewhere, that's where I'm gonna go. Just get stuck idea. up at Publix. 
Ooh, yeah. That's the mm-hmm. one. Um, anyway, I just saw that and I thought it was interesting. Congratulations to whoever that guy is. Way to go. All right, uh, Producer Brian, do you have any SFP headline promo? Yes, uh, this week on the Southern Fried Headlines, we have uh, a mysterious masked squatter in the ceiling of a Washington grocery store. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There's uh, following frozen iguanas in Florida again. (laughs) Have you heard about that? Yeah. That makes me laugh all the time. Uh, This is crazy. There was a shooting uh, in Chicago nine years ago. Okay. The guy just died. From the shooting, so they've changed wow. it to a homicide investigation. Like after nine years, he died from his gunshot wounds. So, wow, like, so weird. Um, a guy in Austin stole some Burger King from his ex girlfriend because he was jealous. <laughs> and then, have you heard the 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 sad news about Mr. Peanut? Yes, I've not. Hashtag or a peanut. Oh, I yeah. see what you did yeah, there. Well, I didn't do it; they did it. Oh, okay. Uh, they're better at that stuff. But yeah, apparently, Mr. Peanut is no more. Hmm. Uh, there's watch the Super Bowl and it's, it's, are it's they gonna, all marketing. Are they gonna make a ginger fluid uh, mascot or something? Now, I guess it, it's probably yeah. I mean, people kids are probably having reactions by watching them, but uh, <laughs> allergic reactions. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that as a someone parent with a peanut sure. allergy kid. But uh, don't uh, explain apparently yourself. He's You're going just a jerk. to uh, he's going to say Wesley Snipes, and he, he dies a hero essentially. Oh my goodness! I didn't watch the the trailer, but that's. I would I would yeah. love it if uh, he said that he had some dirt on no pun intended uh, <laughs> some dirt on the on the Clintons. Oh yeah, that'd be <laughs> awesome. Man. Or Epstein gets, well, or Ep- Epstein Mr. Peanut M- Mr. Peanut Epstein himself. He's a client or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be, oh, no, it'd be interesting if if they had like they showed the pearly gates opening and all of a sudden the mascots of, that have come to pass that so we can't they're no longer politically correct like Joe Camel. Oh right. yeah, Marvel Man. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe in them all greet them in through the pearly gates. That's funny. Mandela effect question: Does oh. uh, does Mister Peanut have a monocle? Yes. Yes. Yeah, he's a monocle. Mm-hmm. Pull it up. I mean, I'm pretty sure it made reference. Here, here's to really another monocle. one I just heard. Does did the fruit of the looms ever have a cornucopia? Yes. Yes. Fruit of the looms. Yes, oh yeah, absolutely. Look at that one up too. So can can you explain what the Mandela effect is? Yeah, the Mandela effect is uh, basically where. What, I, huh. what is it? Well, this is he the, the memorandum it. of Mr. Peanut is a monocle. Oh, oh. it's a very tastefully done uh, mm. illustration here. But so um, the Mandela effect is uh, basically this theory that. We remember, the, the, like, for, was, for example, burnt the Berenstein Bears is mm-hmm. my favorite one. Berenstein or Bernstein? Sinbad. Yeah. Sinbad was, we, we all think Sinbad, Sinbad was in a movie. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the movie was called Shazam. Shazam, yeah. I You know, I could have swore all my life I've seen movie posters. I saw the trailer. I had to see a trailer yeah. for that. So this is the Mandela effect. Is that something that we actually think, mm-hmm. a mass group of people think that something is one way and actually turns out to be not. So. Yeah. Is there a cornucopia in the Fruit of the Loose? I, I do apologize. It was um, the Monopoly Man. Well, he's, oh, Monopoly Man. Yeah, he says he had the monocle. Oh. Yeah, at one time he did. It appears that he he did not have hmm. the monocle. Uh, well, when, well, there's pictures of him with the monocle <laughs> here. These, This, like, photoshopped Monopoly Man. The Monopoly Man never had a monocle. Here's the article. Uh, uh, rich right Uncle Penny Bags, the Monopoly Man, white mustache, top hat, tuxedo. Um, let's see. What's this saying? Okay, come on. According to this article, he never had a monocle. Mm-hmm. So you got to pull up. Oh, maybe you didn't have a monocle. They're showing a picture of the Monopoly box. Oh, am I not on the internet? I am on the internet. Oh, yeah. No, look. Fruit of the Loom does have a cornucopia right there. There's Mr. Peanut does have a monocle. Let's see. Uh, right? Yeah. Oh, wait. Look. Here it is on the Mandela effect. Is this or that? What? Yeah. So I think it's with the cornucopia. Guys, minds are being blown right uh, now. Well, here's one. Uh, 
There's no balcony scene in Romeo and Juliet. No. Shakespeare. No, there has to be. Maybe she's just looking out the window. Maybe she's not on a balcony. Who? It's been in movie adaptations, but it's not actually in the play. Oh, yeah. But everyone I, thinks of it being that way. I thought she was on a balcony. I think that was uh, Aladdin. No? <laughs> she's just looking out the window, yeah. Yeah, I think she's just looking out the window. Anyway. Because apparently balconies didn't uh, exist in England during Shakespeare's uh, lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> no balconies. Yeah. She was on a yacht. Right? <clears throat> she was on a boat. He was on a dinghy. Uh, all right, so let's uh, go to um, – oh, did, were you done with your headlines? Yeah, it's short. It's, only, it's like a six-minute episode, guys. There's no excuse not <laughs> no to download excuses. and listen for six minutes. I mean, come on. <laughs> Again, longer than my love life. All right, so we're going to go to Hot Topics brought to you by – uh, uh, sorry, Hook, Line, and Heroes. Guys, they are a 501c3 organization doing some great work for our vets, so check them out on our sponsor section of our website. Uh, all right, so guys, we're going to go to some Dear Mojo. If you are not familiar with this, I'm going to ask Mojo some uh, Dear Abby questions, and then he's going to respond uh, how he thinks that they should be done, and then we will see how Abby actually did it. <clears throat> Dear Abby, we need advice on how to respond to a friend, to friends and family who poke fun or show a disdain because of our healthy lifestyle. We are in our 60s, and we rarely eat out, and when we do, we avoid fast food. We cook most of our meals at home with an emphasis on veggies, fruits, fish, and chicken. We exercise daily and have occasional treats. We have no chronic illness, and there, and we aren't on any medication. Yet, for some reason, our food choices rub people the wrong way. If we, if we are asked why we are in good health, we answer, over the years, we've learned not to consume foods or beverages that make us feel bad. If we're invited to eat out and order the baked salmon and broccoli instead of the burger and fries, people say your diet is so boring. We usually laugh it off with a shrug. But we don't think our diet is boring. We simply enjoy being healthy and to know that food is medicine. Should we continue to keep our mouth shut? Signed, Healthy Living. I would go up and kick him in the knee and then run away because they can't, can't catch you. You're going to be out of breath. <laughs> I think I think that's a straight answer. Yeah, I mean, okay. just, that's how you solve your problems, people. Yeah, violence. <laughs> small, small, aggressive violence it always works. Uh, dear Abby says, "Yep, our your friends and family react the way they do because seeing you eat the way they do makes them feel self conscious about their own food choices. Mm. Continue laughing and shrugging it to the age of one hundred, and this is where it gets a little bit dark, dear Abby. The others may be not as fortunate as you." Ouch. Oh, did she say kick him in the knee and she, run? She oh. did not. Okay. So that's, a, that's a not, a, not a win for, for Mojo. Ow. Dear Abby, just saying you're going to die and you're going to keep going. How about you? Throwing down. Um, ooh, this one. I'll be laughing over your grave. <laughs> so, that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what Abby just said. He, sh he should just say that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'll, be I'll be at your funeral. Yeah. Uh, dear someone else's mom. I remember my ex-wife complaining about how hard it is to dress little girls in clothes that don't make them look like mini hookers or rock stars. I think I love how he distinguishes the difference between the two. Um, she must have done a really good job with our daughter because I don't remember any problems when she was little. When our daughter was a teenager, now that was a different story, but not as a little girl. My granddaughter just turned eight, and the outfits that she shows up make Madonna look modest. And forget about if I say anything to my daughter. What can an old fart do to keep his granddaughter looking like a kid? Signed, Old Fashioned Grandpa. Boy, I struggle with this one, too, and I have a teenager. Mm -hmm. So, because my, my, my kid perpetually looks like she's homeless. And that's no offense to the homeless community. I'm just saying <laughs> that she does. <laughs> she, I mean, she goes to Goodwill. That's where we did her, that's where we did her school shopping. And people have to shop at Goodwill. That's sure. not that. But people I, people I know that actually shop at Goodwill because they have to, just budget constraints, mm -hmm. actually try to dress nice. My kid goes and dresses like the 70-year-old grandma who doesn't want to dress like a 70-year-old grandma, mm -hmm. puts her clothes at Goodwill. My kid buys them. Mm -hmm. Or it's the 70-year-old who passes away and their kids are having to clean out the closet, takes that. So, um, yeah, my kid dresses like, yeah, 
she dresses like Kurt Cobain's grandmother, like with the cardigans and stuff. It's crazy. But, so yeah, I, I man, I feel your pain. I, uh, you have to speak up because I think that your your daughter doesn't realize the damage she could be causing, the precedence she could be setting for social stigmas with that. So yeah, you got to speak up. I think you gotta, don't keep your mouth shut. I mean, you may you may take some flack from your kid, and you may danger a relationship, but I mean, you got to at least speak your piece and then move on from that. Mr. Brian, do you have any any thoughts on that one? Not really. I mean, that's I mean, as a I have a six year old daughter, at right? Home, you know, so uh, I, you know, this is something you struggle with. You want them to look whatever is fashionable. They want to dress mm-hmm. a certain way. So sometimes if the kid wants to dress a certain way, and you just have to be like, mm, sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll put some clothes on, girl. Yeah, need some discipline somewhere. Um, <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> sorry. Just Dear Abby says, do you have any sense on who's picking your granddaughter's wardrobe? If it's your granddaughter's choice, your daughter may be touchy because she um, is also not a fan of her child's choices. If that's the case, then you try supporting your daughter in a crusade to remind your granddaughter that she's still a kid and she should dress like one. Not to mention that grown-ups get to have the final say. On the other hand, if the choices are your daughter's, then it's trickier. Since she may see your concerns as criticism of her parenting, you could try. Oh, this is awful advice. <laughs> you could try tagging along on a shopping trip to get a sense of things, and maybe take advantage of the opportunity to make some gentle suggestions of items that you think look good on your granddaughter without harping on their appropriateness. Hmm. I don't think I'll take her up on that idea. I'd rather scratch my eyeballs out than go shopping. I'd rather pour bleach on them. I'd rather, I'd rather ride in a Mexican escalator. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. All right, last but not least, dear Abby, I'm a busy woman. My friend, quote, Adele, was calling me excessively on my cell phone. She would call up to three times every day, even while I was at work. When I would take her call, she'd start questioning me, asking me what I was so busy with, and at times she would start lecturing me about things that she thought I should be doing. Her perfectionism and nonstop phone calls were smothering me. I finally asked her, as graciously as I could, to please stop calling the excessive calling. Now she no longer speaks to me at all. We were friends for years, but the constant contact was stressing me out. Do you think I have ruined this friendship, or is there something that it will blow over? Signed, Smothered on the East Coast. Oh, you most certainly ruined it. (laughs) But... You know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, friendships are around for a season, you know, sure. like for a period of time, you know, there, we hear of lifelong friendships and things like that. I, I, I those are things that are awesome, but you know, you sometimes you just have friendships that are for a season. They're there for your, a certain developmental period of your life. I mean, sometimes they have to move on. So, you know, especially if this friend's not cognizant of not, you know, you not wanting to hear all this needless chatter, then Time to move on. But, yeah, you ruined it. She's going bye-bye. Okay. It sounds like I someone needs so. to get a job. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, dear Abby says that Adele should not have been calling you multiple times every day, especially while you were at work, which would have gotten a negative effect on your job performance, and it was not rude to ask her to stop explaining why. It appears that your friend had no hesitation to lecture you about what you should do she was hypersensitive when it came to receiving some constructive criticism. You haven't heard from her because she's trying to punish you. Consider yourself lucky. You haven't ruined the friendship. She has. Oh, again oh, burn. with the burn. Dear Abby's Man, getting a little she's getting saucy. Feisty, yeah. yeah. No doubt. Uh, all right, so that's our episode of Dear Mojo. Or you can, or you can kick her in the knee. That yeah. works, too. She's that's, been, she's she's been listening to this show. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hookline and Heroes is a 501c3 nonprofit based in Charlotte, North Carolina. Founded in 2017 to show God's love and appreciation for our disabled and PTS military veterans. They provide professionally guided fishing trips to nominated veterans at no cost to the veteran. Hookline and Heroes has provided over 30 plus trips around the Carolinas since their founding. From red fishing down in Charleston to striper fishing on Lake Norman and even offshore fishing down in Florida. Each trip is a one-on-one experience with a member of the organization aiming to provide a day of fun and relaxation on the water and begin a lifelong relationship with them. 
Each veteran leaves the day with a fully stocked tackle box, rod and reel, apparel, a Bible, and a daily devotion to kick to kickstart their new hobby and build their relationship with God. Please take the time to visit their website at hooklineandheroes.org to hear and learn more about them. You can help in many ways by nominating a veteran you know through their website, join their monthly giving program, Healing Heroes, or send a one-time personal or corporate donation. You'll also be happy to hear that they are completely volunteer-run and nearly 100% of your donations goes directly towards providing trips for the veterans. Be sure to follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn to see their veteran stories and to show your support. All right, so guys, Cabarrus County, we're going to move to the next topic. Cabarrus County last night um, voted to be a sanctuary city for the Second Amendment gun rights. Um, so they are now saying that if there becomes a federal law that will take away your gun rights, that Cabarrus County will be federal or state. Um, a federal or state law. Okay, okay. Um, that they will be a sanctuary city where you can hide and not have your guns confiscated mm. or your rights infringed upon for getting a gun permit. Gotcha. Gotcha. Thoughts, opinions, and this will lead to the bigger. Well, well I mean, tell me your thoughts. I'm always the first to dive out. So, Well, <clears throat> my thought is, my initial gut reaction is, yay. But then I got to thinking... Well, one, how much power does a city municipality have against the federal government? I think this is just a feel-good, like, it's not going to do anything, really. If the federal government says, we're going to take away your guns, <clears throat> a a community is not going to be able to not enforce that. Like, they could still bring in the National Guard to take them. So I don't know how much how good this is going to do. The second part is if we applaud this, but we don't applaud sanctuary cities for illegal aliens or whatever it may be, um, is that hypocritical of us for not, uh, in effect, complying with federal and state mandates? So, Well, we need to unpack that, what you're saying. Okay. Uh, you know, there's multiple things. Yeah. Um, part, part of me thinks for example let's look at virginia you had uh, governor northam uh, blackface governor northam uh speaks up about changing gun laws i'm going to that later but so all of a sudden you had 90 91 out of 95 counties start to mm. speak up and said look we're gonna be sanctuary counties uh just in case you decide to lack of a better term pull the trigger yeah. Um, I think North Carolina, we have no, we, so far we haven't heard from our illustrious, uh, governor Roy Cooper, who couldn't balance, balance a budget, to save his life or probably even his own personal checkbook. But we yeah. haven't heard anything from governor Cooper yet saying that where he's going to look towards stricter second amendment laws here I, I or second or stricter gun, you know, restrictions. I haven't heard anything yet about that. So I think the, the, because I think North, this is now we're now six or seven count eight counties maybe deep now in North Carolina with the Second Amendment. I know um, Iredell, which is yeah. north of us, d- did it. Um, uh, you have a few other ones that have kind of latched onto that too. Gastonia, I think Gast or Gaston County. So I think right now it's just kind of that feel good thing mm-hmm. on on the surface. Um, but you know, in the case if if Governor Cooper ever did. Uh, decide to do some or get a restrict gun, then I think you'd see a lot more of these counties probably bulk up um, and, and, and also kind of name themselves as, as sanctuary counties. Um, I just hope, you know, being an election year, you all I always get kind of skeptical about this because, mm-hmm. you know, I wonder if these County people see they, you know, no one ever runs a race and gets voted and ever wants to lose power by the vote box ever again. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wonder if it's just capitulation and, and political fuel to sure bump up their numbers. The thing about Cabarrus County is there's no, I mean, there's elections, um, but it's not like Republican, Democrat, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just, you just run on your platform. So 
So it's not Republican or Democratic. I thought, oh, it's not? <clears throat> okay. I, I... No. Uh, but you do get elected, so, mm-hmm. so there is that. Um, but, again, can a county municipality tell the federal government to shove it, I'm going to do whatever I want? And I don't, I don't think they can. Um, I, I, well, I, obviously they can. <laughs> right. Because, because you have Met County. Right. Who has become basically a, a sanctuary county for, for illegal immigrants. They've basically told the, the federal government to shove it. I mean, yeah. we've had many cases where, and this is the extreme. I'm not saying all illegal aliens are like this at right. all. Because, right. you know, and I, we could talk about this on another show, but you'd be hard pressed to go get your food cooked, grass cut, daycare, house, ha- house clean, even some nurses and upper echelon people like that. I mean, are illegal aliens. So you're hard pressed to not run across an illegal alien every day. But what my point is, is that we've had these, the extreme cases where illegal aliens get arrested for one cause, get released because the county doesn't want to retain them and allow ICE to come in to investigate. And then all of a sudden they go out and, you know, hit, hit them, hit, a, hit, a, hit and kill someone through a drunk driving or shoot them, shoot someone at worse. I mean, mm-hmm. so we've had this. So I, I think the, the, I don't think the federal government is going to jump in and do anything like that. Right. But we, we've had counties give the give federal government the finger before. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just, I just have, I, I don't, I mean, cause then at that point you can make your county whatever you want it to be. Like this is a, like a, a marijuana county. So even though it's illegal, we're going to allow that. We're not going to prosecute. But you could do literally whatever you want oh, yeah, in you your can, county. You can have, hey, we're, we're pro-life county or we're pro-choice county sanctuary. I mean, yeah. And I mean, you could really go to the extreme on everything. I, right. I, I think I think a lot of it right now in this, in this climate is probably just a feel-good thing. So I, at least in my opinion, I, yeah. mean, I think it's a feel-good thing. And knowing – some of the people that actually know, knowing of some of the people that sit on the Cabarrus County board, I think it's just kind of more of a feel good thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it's really in their politics or the DNA. I think it's literally like they fear their district's constituents mm-hmm. and being voted out of office. But that's just my personal yeah. opinion on that. I mean, as long as we give one council member his corn, corn dog, we'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, I don't know. It was just, it was just interesting um, on that part. 2A, Virginia, can we dive deeper into to what's going on there? I saw where it passed this week on the uh, – today, or yesterday actually, where it passed on the red flag bill that if you suspect that somebody uh, is going to do harm to oneself or others, you can call the police. They can get a judge um, to sign off on a warrant, and they can just go ahead and – go in and take guns mm-hmm. if that person owns it. So that, that has been passed in Virginia. What, what's, what's your thoughts on that, Brian? Cause you haven't jumped in yet. Well, I was going to take it out to the broad and ask, cause it's the first time I've heard about the taking guns thing, but I was like, who has said specifically that they were going to come in and just take everybody's guns. Has that been stated? Yeah, by there's any actually, there was, well, there was actually a rep and, um, well, we can go back to a uh, pretty boy that ran for the president. On the Democrat side, Democrat side, Eric Salswell, Eric Salswell actually made uh, the comment of actually nuking gun owners. <laughs> so, um, That's a big drastic. Yeah, but yeah. we did have we did have. Um, he also runs the Dear Abby account now. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, you also did have a representative in um, Virginia. You know, once Northam came up with this whole gun thing and. Uh, you had this representative actually come out and state that they would use the national guard to go. Don't push us basically on the issue because we will have, we will use the national guard to confiscate. And I am paraphrasing extremely because I don't have the quote. in front. And, and I think that he actually increased the budget to have the national guard come in. If that came to be the case. Yeah. But the good thing is the state guard guy was like, Oh, oh slow your horses. Yeah. That, and I'm paraphrasing the state guy too. The state guy was like, nah, that's not going to happen. Captain. Yeah. So, I feel like they, there has to be some serious things happening before you get to that level, though. Because I understand they're wanting to add regulation. Sure. They want to make it harder to buy guns. 
I'm not opposed to that personally, <laughs> so, just because of the way this country's going. But uh, though I actually did a little bit of reading today to try to prepare for this a little bit. And uh, when I was reading about the Virginia stuff, mm-hmm. um, they were saying, you know, they want to make it harder for like the AR-15 kind of situation. To, if you ban that, there would probably be a grandfather, so they're going to come after you. But they probably stop selling them. It'd be harder to get those in the state. Those but why, things. But why sell? Why stop selling them? Well, if they're illegal to have but why in the make, state. But I'm saying, why make them illegal in the state? I, that's what they're. Well, I know. What's I'm the, saying, well, for me, the what's, the, what's the point of an AR-15? In a in a unless you're expecting to have like twenty gangbangers come into your house. What's the, time, what's, the you know? point, what's the point of having a semi-automatic pistol that has a ten round or seven round? I mean, why not just carry a, a five shot revolver? I mean, because if you, oh, let's be honest with you, yeah. if you can't hit the person in five shots, you really don't well, need yeah. to be carrying a gun. So, you know what you're doing. Well, actually, yeah. we just need to probably just carry a single shot, you know, bond arm or something like just that. Just go to dueling. Yeah. We'll get, we we get a Dillinger, you know, one <laughs> shot round. If you, if you if you blow it, then nah, it's time to meet your maker. Yeah. Anyway. I, just, I don't see the, the point of having even why, because, you know, the, the Second Amendment talks about militia. Mm-hmm. If you're in a militia, that's great. Have all the automatic weapons you want. <laughs> To defend, you know. <laughs> well, and I think that's the that's point, thing, yeah. right, is if the government becomes too powerful, the whole point from the founding fathers is to overthrow the government. We've already passed that point, though. Like, the government's already too powerful. If the citizens are not going to rise up and overpower the government, we've got, we're way past that. I, I, if the I military comes in, the, tr- the military comes in, and we have all of our good old boys with their, their guns— mm-hmm. We're not gonna. I mean, we can put up a fight, but we're not gonna win. Have you seen Red Dawn? It worked for them. <laughs> but, well, saying. I mean, it, it's but you know that with that mentality, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I we, have, it's, we have drones. My, and this my and that mentality and this and that. is the Constitution was written at a completely different time. But the Constitution is still a living, breathing document. Is the First Amendment any less important than the right to bear arms? I mean, it did all of a sudden the the, the freedom of speech. Over the course of 225 plus years now, has it become less important because it was written in a time with that? Is it less? Is it still being? I mean, you you can't say anything though, can you? And so that's the point: is that you that? But I'm saying, on principle, <laughs> is the freedom of speech less important now? It's probably no. I would not say that one is less important. Okay, search and seizure, uh, for you know, uh, are. Yes, uh, it's Fourth Amendment search and seizure. Is that less important now? I would say it's probably more important that we have that, just because of all the data and yeah, with, stuff. With and, the yeah, there's a lot of privacy stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, more I, important now. I would but, definitely say. But that's what I'm saying is that the, these amendments are fluid through through centuries. That you know, I I, I beg to differ. I, I believe without some type of equalizer, and you know, I don't think you have to match the military you know weapon for weapon like i don't i don't need a tank i mean it'd be kind of cool to have a tank sure. but i don't need a tank but i think you know going back to the to the revolutionary war three percent of the population rose up and fought the world's largest standing army that conquered nation after nation after nation only three percent hmm. i mean that's the reason why you have the three percenters walking around now talking about you know we're <laughs> they're going to take a, they're going to take on the government, but I, I think you'd have a, a bigger uprising. But that's how that's how the first amendment goes away is by taking the second amendment away. That's, re- that's how it mm-hmm. happened in China. China, you can't own a firearm, and of course you you can't do squat there either. So I don't know. I I, I beg to differ on a lot of points like that, and in, I don't want to bore anybody with that, but or my comments. But I mean, like I I don't think I think the red flag laws are horse crap because. Those things are so, um, they can be translated with a difference. I mean, some red flag laws now in certain states, like if you have a veteran who has PTSD, who happens to have a medical cannabis card, now has to turn his guns in because that mm-hmm. could be a possible red flag. I mean, yeah. it's just crazy. Yeah, so. and it's all open to interpretation. There's no hard line of this is exactly what it looks like, right? If I think Joe Bob across the street looks scary, um, and he and he looked at me sideways one day. Could that be enough for a judge to order that and go right. in and take all of the stuff? Yeah, By the way, and those are, t- those are temporary things, right? Because there's an investigation there. It's an investigation. Place. It's a hassle, and, and you should probably be able to 
sue the crap out of somebody if they. But you won't. There's no <laughs> retaliation, <laughs> and you're going to have to pay to get your guns back because there's going to be obviously a holding fee for all that, um, and court, you know, cases and court time and whatnot. So you're out money because Joe Bob looked at you funny, or you look, you know, whatever the case may be, and it may. You know, it could be a harmless thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I'm not in fa- favor of those those laws either. That's. Yeah, I think I think they could be misappropriated and mm-hmm. abused. Absolutely. Right. So we get those crazy neighbors who just you know they're always like looking out in the blinds when you come right. out. You know, they're... <laughs> you know, and, I'm I am that crazy. No. And you know, not to mention the fact of you could get your guns back, but then you may not, and it may be over a long period of time. And yeah. what happened? Here's the question. What happens if somebody breaks into your house while those guns have been taken? You can't defend yourself, and one of your family members dies. What um, happens then? Yeah, like who's liable for that? Is it the person that turned you in? Is it the government? Who? I'm like, yeah. what's going to happen there? Yeah, um, it's a very slippery slope. And as you often do, you try to push things out to the nth degree on well, what if? Yeah, I don't think you have to push very hard for this at all. To see, this is not going to be a good idea. Um, so I, I thought it was interesting. Any anything else you wanted to to add to the the two A? No, I, I think that. I mean, to uh, add to what now? I'm sorry. Like the two A protest, the, oh, the um, Virginia I th- thing. I, I I I I think it was interesting. Uh, they had a protest, what, on the 17th, which was Martin Luther King Day in Virginia and Richmond. I think, you know, some reports are saying that upwards of between thirty and 50,000 people showed up from across the state and, and some nation, you know, people came across. Um, so, and not one shot was fired. Mm-hmm. Not one person was hurt. Um, they didn't litter the streets. So I thought it was a pretty, obviously, they're reporting a very respectful protest. Mm-hmm. Um, you did have Antifa show up to counter protest, but I think they decided to not counter protest maybe just go get a star- overpriced starbucks <laughs> um you had you did have some anti second amendment people there protesting but their their numbers were much smaller um but i i think from from people who are proponent or who are <laughs> are respectful of the second amendment and actually believe it is a god given right to be able to protect yourself now we we could discuss with what with what guns and things like that but just mm-hmm. having the basic second amendment um I I'm pretty proud of what they've done. I mean, they showed up. Yeah. And they organized a grassroots or, uh, thing and showed up. And um, it'd be interesting to see if Northam pushes through with this because, in, in especially his um, party people that are in the same party affiliate with him, still jump on the bandwagon with this. It'd be should be interesting to see if they if um, any of these people are elected back to their positions mm-hmm. if they maintain the certain you know yeah. maintain this this policy and it, it's amazing like if virginia is such an interesting state because you have um the west side of virginia which is very hillbillyish country i mean <laughs> rural <laughs> well i mean i'm a redneck hillbilly so i can call it but um you have that and you i mean you have a lot of tobacco farmers ex tobacco farmers a lot of farming like agriculture all of a sudden you get up to the northeast side you got belt oh, way, yeah. beltway oh yeah it's a t- it's a i mean you might yeah. as well just carve that little piece of virginia off and just let them see because <laughs> they don't represent the values of most virginians mm. so it's just yeah. it's, it's yeah. just interesting and the well, population is there so dense they get probably a little oh, yeah. more <laughs> say speaking of, speaking of that um they're actually uh, Vir- Vir- uh virginia members actually trying to uh write a bill to put before congress um to actually ban the or go from electoral college to popular vote mm-hmm. that's just kind of yeah. expression and that kind of just hammers home that the dense population of virginia can you know can elect a governor who doesn't represent all virginians so, you know yeah. yeah sure smart let uh, me clear on the gun thing just yeah. so I have guns in my house. Mm-hmm. I have firearms. I have a concealed carry permit. Mm-hmm. I believe in the right to protect yourself in your house. Right. You're just a Yankee. Yeah. You're, getting ready. You're getting ready for those emails. I yeah. See. Yeah. I'm just, you know, <clears throat> uh, just to be clear, right. you know, I have received all of my firearms were either gifts or inherited. Hmm. I've never had to buy one. I've never paid for one. Gotcha. But I have plenty in my house. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> to defend myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So I'm just saying that's out there. 
talk about how easy it is. You're just you just don't want somebody to break into your house now. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> No, go ahead. Yeah, no, but you know, we're talking about how easy it is to acquire firearms, and that's—I think that's to me—that's where but, something's got to be different. But is you know? it? Is it really that? I, like you do when you go to purchase a gun, you have to go through an FFL dealer. Mm-hmm, you can't just yeah. go to Walmart and just buy it there. They're supposed to send that off to get your background check done. Mm-hmm. Then you can come back and get it's your like weapon. three day. Period, right? Uh, I think it is. North Carolina, I think it's three days, right? Cool down or whatever. It's three to five. It's three, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's three. Three business days, maybe. Okay. <laughs> if you can still carry, it's right away. Well, yeah. If you have a still carry permit, you can just walk in and go, I want that one. Right. And you're done. And the dealer. You know. Yeah. But, I mean, all this gun show loophole, I mean, you that's, Ill- that's already illegal. Like, you can't go buy a gun out of a gun shop, gun store. And then go in the parking lot and turn around and sell that to Joe Bob. I mean, there's no nothing saying you can't. There's no regular. There's no yes. like. Mm-hmm. There's no like permit. There's no like licensing with these guns, right? So you can supposedly none of these things would happen. But if I want to sell a handgun to somebody under the table, that's illegal. Yeah, but how do you know that it took? It was transferred. Well, how do you know where the gun came from to begin with? There's no way to track that. There's nowhere that that serial number doesn't have my name attached to it anywhere. So if it shows up somewhere else, no one ever knew I had it, right? Just because we, just because just, we want things to be regulated doesn't mean it's going to happen. I mean, for Christ's sake, heroin's illegal, yeah. and it still pro- proliferates the streets. Yeah, I mean, you make guns illegal. You all all of a sudden you make common people criminals overnight and then you make a black market for yeah. guns to be provided. I mean, it's just going to happen that way. I mean, I look, I get the sentiment right now, especially in this, in this, in this, uh, new cycle of 24 hour hysteria where everything is publicized. If it bleeds, it leads. And you, you would think that everyone, someone's getting shot every second of the day. You know, in mass mass shootings, I, I I mean, I can understand the want to gravitate towards mass hysteria. Even myself, who is pro gun, you know, there's been a couple shootings, mass shootings. You're like, man, maybe we maybe I do need to reconsider my position. But then you realize you sit down and dissect it, and you know, these are the same people as if we, people if we had no guns, and guns automatically evaporated tomorrow. They would they would find a course of means to. Mm. commit the same act just yeah. a different method yeah and in and, and that same argument there you think about like in england and ireland you can't there's no firearm you can't carry a gun mm-hmm. in any of those places so stuff gets blown up mm-hmm. instead right. that's the difference you know and <sighs> and i i am for common sense just to clear the air for common sense gun control but like let's use technology why can't we use a fingerprint sensor on the on the trigger like this is your gun you're responsible for it Here's the, you know, <clears throat> here's the, the fingerprint sensor when you pull it. You know, that could be there. It's not that hard to think that that could be put on the put on the weapon. Use I, technology. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a, to me, that seems a little too far. <laughs> well, I mean, even I think the gun print technology, I mean, just like with all technology, uh, you have technology can fail, you know, especially when you need it. I mean, right. I, uh, I mean, let's just say, for example, myself, I carry a gun every day in my shop. It's only 24-7 just because of the neighborhood I'm in. I have to set the tone for the, the street. I mean, I work around oil. I work around lubricants. Yeah. And all of a sudden, what if my little sensor gets corroded or, you know, my yeah. hands are and my hands are oily and, you know, there's... there's sure, if whatever's that, charging that sensor, the battery die, goes yeah. dies and you're in an emergency, you can't fire your weapon yeah. to protect yourself in those situations. So there's the things yeah. I think about. I mean, I, in principle... <laughs> I, I think they're great okay. ideas, but sometimes when you, out of principle, if you put it into action, I think sometimes it can be worse. Just like, you know, the war on drugs and Nancy Reagan, just say no. It, that was great. <laughs> great idea. I'm drugs thinking. are bad. Yeah. But in the same time, you know, you got kids wearing just say no shirts and you got, you know, they're peddling weed out of their blockers. I mean, yeah. it's just, it. I think in principle, paper looks great. I yeah. just sometimes I think the action doesn't live up. Maybe we, somehow we can leverage technology. Yeah, I, there's got to be something. I, I just, 
I, I don't know what it would be. Maybe Elon Musk and the AI machine that beats his <laughs> brain can <laughs> come up with something. Hey, Google, shoot my gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, into your passcode first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go. Uh, anyway, just, just some food for thought for, for everybody. So uh, I think that kind of wraps up our show for today. Mojo, send us out. Yeah, we appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Uh, please go to our Facebook page at Southern Fry Philosophy or website at southernfryphilosophy.com. Wherever you listen to your uh, podcast at, just please go hit Southern Fry Philosophy, uh, subscribe, give us a like, a rating, a review. And if you haven't registered as an organ donor, please go down to your DMV or your Apple app phone health thing and sign up as a donor. And yeah, just continue life just in case you don't make it. Thanks, guys. Uh, and uh, if you want to follow us on our journey to get more healthy, follow us on Twitter at, at Healthy SFP Radio. Uh, there we'll be posting uh, every once in a while just to let folks know where we're at and how we're doing. Encourage us. Let us know, hey, keep up the good work. Keep rocking. And uh, we would appreciate that. And as always, keep looking up. You're listening to the SFP Radio Network.